Hey guys, David here, coming at you with a review of the brand new Hope HB130. Really exciting bike this, especially as a British mountain biker. All British bike, even a frame is made here in the UK. Now Hope, as I'm sure you know, are best known for disc brakes and hubs and other CNC machined aluminium parts. That's been their expertise for the last 20 plus years. But three years ago, they launched a HB160 and it had a carbon mainframe. Now, rather than go to the Far East and get a carbon specialist to make the frame for them, they decided, hey, let's do it here in the UK. So they built a factory, invested in all the expertise and tools and manpower you need to produce a carbon frame in-house. And the results, as I'm sure you'd agree, are pretty spectacular. So the HP 160 launched a couple of years ago, a long travel enduro bike, but this is the 130. 130 travel at the back, 140 at the front, 29 inch wheels, designed as a, the perfect UK trail bike basically, but with some interesting details. So like the HP 160, got a full carbon front triangle and it's beautifully made. The workmanship here is stunning. I love the fact they've kept the carbon weave exposed to, rather than hide it away underneath paint, they've left it on show, so you can really see how smooth it is. Yeah, it's a beautiful shape, really nice curve to the top tube, plenty of stando clearance, and space for a bottle cage down in the down tube there. Internal K-routing, as mentioned, got a press fit 47 millimeter bottom bracket down there. It's Hope's own standard, but they produce bottom brackets, so they can produce a bottom bracket for any crank set you're gonna use on the frame. So shouldn't be a problem. Tapered head tube out the front, and then, so that carbon at the front, and then moving to the back, this is where the company really shows off of their expertise in CNC machining. Got a full aluminium rear end, a swing arm, rocker linkage. They're using a four bar suspension layout with a horse link down on the chainstay. So it delivers 130 millimeter of travel, matched that 140 at the front, as I mentioned. Now a neat trick is the flip chip on the rocker linkage, so you can adjust the, the geometry a little bit, give it a bit of um, bottom bracket and head angle adjustment if you need. It's currently set up in the slackest setting. And the geometry is really interesting on this bike. Geometry really defines how a bike rides, the attitude of the bike. For this bike, 130, 140 travel, UK trail bike, they're going for a 66 degree head angle. And on this size large, a 470 reach. The seat angle is a shade under 76 degrees. Numbers that aren't the longest and slackest or most progressive, as they like to say in the mountain bike world, but definitely look on point and should be ideal for the sort of riding this bike is aimed for. It's kind of a hard charging trail bike, really. Another key detail I've got to mention with the rear end, rather than use a Boost 148 rear axle, which has really become standard in the mountain bike world, they've gone with their own 130 millimeter wide rear spacing, coupled to an oversized 17 millimeter through axle. The idea is basically to have less dishing on a rear wheel, so you have a stiffer rear wheel, and also to keep the rear mech and everything nice and compact in the back, so you've got more clearance when you're threading through rocks and roots as well. And it looks really narrow. We look down at the back of the bike, it looks really kind of pinched in, really tight arse on this bike compared to most bikes, which are quite wide. And another benefit should be increased uh, heel clearance when you're pedaling, you're less likely to hit your heel on the chain stays. That's a nice benefit. The downside, of course, is you're tied into Hope's own standard. Now, Hope have designed the bike from the ground up, so they really looked at every part of the bike. And because they do all their own hubs and button brackets, they decided to do things a little bit differently. They're not trying to introduce a new standard that they hope everyone else will adopt. They've just done what they think is right for their bike and suits what they want out of their bike and requirements and so on. So that could be an issue, especially if you're buying a frame set and you want to build up yourself. But most likely you buy a complete bike like this one here or get a frame set with a set of wheels and shouldn't be a problem. It's only really a problem if you want to swap wheels out um, all the time or just want that future-proofed ability. But then boost is here now. It might be going in a couple of years time to a wider super boost or whatever's coming next. So this is a complete bike and it costs 6,300 pounds. And of course you get lots of Hope equipment. So I've got Hope carbon handlebar at the front. That handlebar was launched a few years ago and was the company's first carbon product really showed the way for their uh, carbon development. Got a set of Hope uh, E4 brakes on the front with bite and reach adjustment, four pot calipers of course, got Hope's own rotors, and the wheel set is from Hope as well. Uh, their own hubs, uh, Pro 4 hubs with a new Fortis rims, nice wide profile. Now the group set is from SRAM, it's their Eagle EXO offering, 12 speed of course, 1050 at the back, and a carbon crank set. 
Now, when you buy, when a brand buys a SRAM group set, they have to buy the whole group set as part of SRAM deal. So you can replace the crank set with a Hope aluminium CNC machine crank set if you prefer. I think it's about a 300 pound increase. I'll put the details in the description below. So on the scales, this is size large, as mentioned, it's just about 31 pounds without pedals. So a little bit more with pedals. Suspension duties are taken care of by a Fox 36 on the front with a nice grip to damper internals and on the back a DP X2 shock with adjustable compression to so open uh, middle and locked out on the back there as well. So high quality suspension components as you expect on a bike of this price. Also from Fox is the transfer 150 millimeter dropper post on the back there. So all nice kits, all high quality kit, no problems at all. Now, when it comes to value for money, well, that really is subjective and depends on what lens you're looking through when you're looking at bikes and equipment and how much it costs. Now, Hope is a small company. This is their second bike. They're not making many. I think they make five or six frames a week. So really small scale. They're not gonna compete with the big brands to specialize with Trek, the Giants, the Canyons, especially the direct sales brands like Canyon Rose and YT, etc. So you might be looking at the bike and thinking it's really expensive for the parts you have on it. And yes, it probably is compared to some of those brands. And there are bikes that will be better spec or lower price for the same spec as this bike, which is fine. You can't really compare this bike with those bikes because as I said, it's a small company producing small scale uh, units here. So it's difficult to talk about value for money, really. If you're British and you're a proud British person and you want to buy a British bike, there aren't many choices. This is definitely one of them and one of the most exciting, one of the few carbon ones as well. So that adds to the value. You're buying a British bike, British manufactured bike as well. It's exclusive as well. So it's got a rarity value, which a lot of bikes won't have. So that's another factor to add into it. So there are other factors you need to consider when you're looking at value for money, because it's not all about the components. It's about the whole package and everything else about the package that will um, add to that value as well. So it's definitely not a bike for everybody, but You'll either get it or you won't really. I think that's the key with this bike. But you're probably wondering, Dave, it all looks fantastic, but how does it ride? Well, luckily I've had the last few weeks to ride this bike and I'm gonna sum up my review of basically saying it's a really good, fun bike. Fun is really the word that came up time and time again. The numbers for me at five foot 11 are spot on. The reach is uh, comfortable without being too stretched. That slack hand angle gives you plenty of um, capability on steep descent and it's just really agile and poppy. Now the rear suspension is very active, it's very lively and you'll either love that or hate it. It's similar to a specialized FSR in terms of how active it is. It gives loads of traction on climbs, really smothers small bumps and roots and rocks so you, you scamper up climbs really well. It's not quite enough anti-squat perhaps, not quite progressive enough so you have to use that compression dial on the shot to kind of firm it up a little bit for steeper, longer climbs. It can bob a little bit. Now, if you have a smooth pedaling style, it's minimized a little bit, but if you're quite manic on pedals, you can get a suspension to bob quite erratically. So that's something you need to consider. You can put some more volume tokens in the shock, use that compression dial. But once you get used to it, once you get used to that riding style, it works really well. As I said, loads of traction on climbs. It climbs everything really well. Got a nice steep seat angle, so you're in a good pedaling position, plenty of power over the bottom bracket for getting up climbs. Because that suspension is so active and lively, rather than just riding through a section and the bike's just kind of soaking it all up and not giving you anything back, you have loads of ability to kind of pop off roots and rocks and lips. So the geometry isn't the longest or the slackest, but I found it worked really well here on my local trails in the UK. Plenty of ability to get up climbs, really good on the flatter boring trails and loads of fun on the descent as well. Got a nice low bottom bracket so when you're loading the corners it feels really stable and planted and you really get it into corner. Um, it holds traction well, holds the line well and you get out of it with loads of speed. Head angle slack enough that on the steepest descent you feel behind the bike enough and you really put the bike where you want it and at high speed it is really stable. Steep seat angle for efficient climbing as well which does help to overcome the slight lack of anti-squat in the rear suspension. The frame is really stiff. There's no lack of stiffness in the frame at all. It does a good job of muting uh, trail noise as well. It's quite a quiet bike. There's perhaps a hint of flex on the back end, not a huge amount. I'm quite a light rider. I think a heavier rider might get the back end flexing a bit more than I could. But as a whole, it rode, um, yeah, rode beautifully really. All the kit is top notch. 
I love the Fox 36. Brakes are really powerful, loads of modulation. So I think it's fair to say I'm impressed with a new HB130. It looks fantastic, got some lovely details, really nicely made, and it rides really well too. Really agile, fun and playful. And um, it's all the bike I really need here for the UK. And so would I buy it? That's a big question really. And yes, I would. If I had the money, I'd definitely go out and buy this bike. It's only when you look at rivals that it's starting to look a bit expensive, but as I mentioned earlier, it's British made and it's you know, a small uh, brand, not making many, so, but as the exclusivity of it. And I've got loads of looks, loads of admiring glances out on the trail riding this bike as well, because a lot of people have not seen one before and really want to take a closer look. So that is something that might appeal to you. So yeah, I would rush out and buy it if I had the money, so I might start saving. There's not much I change really. My big concern really is the 130 rear end. Just I worry about the future proofing um, aspect of that rear end that you tie into a system that yeah, you get some good wheels, but you can't put another set of wheels in there. And as somebody who's always testing different wheels and components, it means I can't easily change the wheels to another set of wheels. Bottom bracket shouldn't be a problem. Hope I've made good bottom brackets in the past, so that should be fine. Everything else is on, on point really, the geometry, the look, space for bottle cage, the weight is all um, on point. So yeah, really impressive bike. I love what Hope's done here and I hope we do more bikes like this. I can see their range expanding and with that range expanding and hopefully that capacity to build more bikes expands, hopefully the price can come down a little bit more to compete with some of the more mainstream rivals. But yeah, if you're looking for a new trail bike this year and you want something a bit different, a bit British, then check out the Hope HB 130.